name is Adam, this is Van City Audi, and today I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Enough of the RS3 footage, I know you guys love it, and that's why you subscribe, but I wanted to do a video that's going to help a lot more people than just RS3 owners. Today, I am going to log a vehicle and show you the difference in power levels and performance before and after from when you use simple pump gas, our terrible garbage for performance pump gas in the lower mainland in British Columbia, Canada, and then we're gonna spike it. We're gonna spike it with a little ethanol, a little E85 for those E85 junkies running that corn sauce. This is the video for you. It's gonna show you guys the performance potential and what you can do to your vehicle, how you can transform it and get it to work as perfectly as it was meant to. We have a really bad thing here in Vancouver. I'm sure it's in other places of the world. Guys, yo bro, I got this sick new tune. I got all these cool new parts. Cost me 10 G's. Check it out. They get on the track. Their car is slow as crap. Oh my God, what the hell? The tuners, they told me this car could go blah, blah, blah. But they haven't ever logged their car. They haven't ever checked on whether their car is running properly. They just slap it on and hope for the best. Buddy of mine, Adrian, is coming out today with his 2013, at least I think it's 2013, Audi S4, supercharged, three liter V6. These things are awesome. One of my favorite cars of the older Audis. I love these things, especially when they get the upgraded supercharger kits. Beep, screaming away, love it. What he's gonna do today is we're gonna log his car. First log, we're using the simple 91 pump octane, or 91 octane pump fuel from Shell. Zero ethanol. Here in BC, Shell 91, there's no ethanol in it. So we're gonna log that with VCDS from Rostec. If you don't know what that is, I'll put it in the description below. You can look up Rostec.com and you'll see what the VCDS program is that we're gonna be logging the vehicle. Gonna go out there, get you all those numbers. By logging the vehicle, we're gonna see how much timing is being pulled from each of his six cylinders because the fuel that we're using is not up to par for what the tune is requesting. The tune he's chosen is Integrated Engineering Stage 1, meant for 91 octane fuel. What a lot of the masses and the majority of people don't realize is as much as it's tuned for 91, not all 91 is equal. You may get 91 in California and BC, which is crap, you may go to the East Coast and get 91 fuel, which is much, much better quality. So, once I've shown you guys all the corrections and how terrible the fuel is for performance, we're gonna toss in a little E85 for all of you. What we're going to do is we're gonna show you just how much E85 can improve performance, even if you use a little. Now, I'm not gonna say just free ball it and toss it in there, hope for the best, that's not safe. What Adrian has gone and done is he's actually installed an ethanol analyzer, an ethanol content analyzer to be specific. He used the Fuelit kit. Now you don't have to use that kit. There's a lot of options out there. You can get gauges installed, the whole nine yards. But what his kit does is it uses a Bluetooth adapter and it sends the signal to his phone. His phone will then show him the content of ethanol in his fuel. It actually doesn't show that. It shows the percentage of what isn't gasoline, but I'm not gonna get into that in this video. Basically, his phone right now, his Bluetooth analyzer, shows zero because the fuel he's using has no ethanol. Once we have those baseline numbers, we're gonna spike it a bit. We're gonna add, I think we're gonna do about a gallon, close to four liters. Then he's gonna let the gauge run, do a little bit of driving, let the car adapt, let the ECU adapt to know, holy crap, there's some good stuff in that fuel tank. Let's start making more power. Then he's gonna do another log on VCDS, same parameters and everything, and we're gonna watch those timing corrections slowly disappear until we find the magic number of ethanol in which there's no more timing being pulled from any of the cylinders. Once you have that, you know your fuel is on par and your car is gonna be running really, really well. That's timing, yes, there's other parameters that make your car run well, like your boost and all that stuff, but we're not getting into that on this video. So, we'll show you the before and after, we'll show you how much timing's being pulled off just regular pump gas, as most people don't even bother doing this, their cars are slow, they're not running well, why isn't this man, I'll spend 10 grand on parts in this tune! 
This is why you gotta put in the due diligence. You gotta scan your car. You gotta log your car. If you're gonna start doing perform for per performance parts, you can't speak, and you wanna make sure you're getting the most out of your car, this is what you have to do. It's not a big deal. Adrian can tear down parts or cars and put them back together. He's extremely mechanically inclined, unlike myself. But I have the basic understanding of the tuning side of things and what needs to be checked on to make sure your car runs well. So it's kind of a little tradesy. He's helping me out. I'm helping him out. I hope a lot of you take this video to heart. You get out there, you log your cars, and if it's underperforming because the fuel you're using is garbage, you start spiking it with a little of that corn sauce, that little corn syrup, E85, get that octane level a bit higher, get it out there and get the true performance of your vehicle. Before we get any of this started, I just wanted to remind you guys that I've already done a video on how to log ignition timing in an RS3 or a TTRS, one of the new guys, the 8V chassis or the 8S chassis. On these older Audis, you're gonna have to log different parameters, but you can always find the different cylinders. Make sure you log all of them. Check out in the description below, I'll put a link to that video I've already done that'll give you a bit of po a few pointers on how to do it, and then anything else you can find for the individual parameters on each car. They vary different makes and models. Just make sure you get all of the cylinders plus the total timing advance. So here is his actual fuel it app on his phone reading a 0% ethanol content right now. I'm gonna show you now what it looks like under the hood of the car and where it's located on his 2013 Audi S4. Here it is under the hood, the B8 S4 kit from Fuelit, all wired up with the additional connectors. You buy it as a kit, you can install it. This is a B8.5, but it still fits perfectly on there to show his ethanol content. So we got the car going, we got VCDS running, we can see Adrian in the background in the reflection. <laughs> there is a lot of sun here, so pardon the reflection, guys. But I have all six cylinders being logged, including the total ignition angle. We're gonna get him out, do a third gear pull now, and see what his baseline is on this Shell 91 fuel with zero ethanol. Here he goes for his first baseline. See how much ignition is being pulled. you'll have to forgive the glare again please it's a sunny day out here I did not think of this ahead of time <laughs> this is the timing the overall timing of cylinder one as you can see it dips a lot it's going down it's up and it's down it's up and it's down that's actually because it is pulling timing from those cylinders it hits a max 13 degrees of timing at seven, what is that, 7200 RPM, which is his red line on this integrated engineering stage one tune. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each individual cylinder and you can see the timing and how it gets pulled as he accelerates. On cylinder, what is this? Cylinder one, he's seeing a max of 7.13 degrees of timing being pulled at 5300 RPM. It climbs up again, but still, that is a huge chunk of timing being pulled. He's not seeing anywhere near the power he should be. And we're gonna go to cylinder two, and it's dropping, it's dropping, it's dropping, and it hits a minimum of 9.38 degrees of timing at 6700. That goes to show how horrible our fuel is. It's not providing the octane that he needs to be able to run this tune to its potential. Now I should remind you guys this, does not just pertain to integrated engineering. They make fabulous tunes and fabulous hardware. This pertains to all of the tuning companies out there. This is what you are going to see if your fuel is not up to par. So we're gonna go all the way up to near red line and you can see that guys, I hope you can. Three and a half degrees, seven degrees, three and a half, six, seven and a half. God, he's missing out on so much power, but that's why we're doing this. We are now gonna spike the car with some E85 and get him some more power. Can barely see you guys, I left my damn shades of the car. Now he's gonna do a draggy run for you, before and after, so we can see the performance gains once we toss in that E85 and get rid of all that timing correction. 
first draggy attempt. I love that supercharger wine. How'd you do? Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> oh, that's hurtful. 13-1. It's a toasty day out here, but once we add that ethanol, we get rid of that timing pull, we're gonna do much better. So we've got his E85 ready. We're gonna put in about five to six liters or a gallon to a gallon and a half. We've tested the ethanol content of this fuel manually, and it was about E65. So now we're gonna to toss some in and see where he gets to on his Bluetooth ethanol content analyzer. Adrian is now out ripping back and forth wanting to let the ECU adapt to the higher octane level now with the additional E85 that we've put in. You want to make sure that you let it adapt first before you start bagging on it. It's not going to cause any harm, you're not going to blow up your car or anything like that, but we're playing it safe and we're not going above E10 for the first one because fuel across North America is mandated to have at most 10% ethanol content. So what we're using is 91 Shell ethanol free fuel with additional E65 added to it to get it to about E10. When he comes back from the car adapting, I think he'll be at around E10 with how much ethanol we added. And what do we have on the ethanol gauge? Did we get it right? Are we E10? It is E9. Oh, we're so close! E9, beauty. Now we're gonna get to that second log. The power. <laughs> so we still got that horrible, horrible reflection, and I am sorry about that. But look what we've accomplished by adding E9. We are now seeing 17 degrees of peak timing compared to the 13 degrees prior to adding that ethanol. Now we're going to go to each cylinder where we were seeing massive, massive hits of like seven, eight, and nine degrees being pulled, we are seeing a maximum of 4.8 and 3.3 in two cylinders. At 5,000 RPM, the rest are only at one degree being pulled. Then as you go higher, it gets less and less and less. And while you're up really high in the rev range, we're only seeing 2.6 in cylinder or two, and then a max of what is not even a degree of timing up top. That is fabulous. So because Adrian friggin' rocks, we're going to add a little bit more E and see if we can get rid of this correction all together. We added some more ethanol. You got that E13 on the gauge, spiced it up a bit more and going to go out and data log one more time before that second draggy pull. Here is the final data log of the day with E13. This is the peak timing. We are still seeing 17 degrees. So we hit that peak timing on E9, but E13 has cleaned up the rest of the ignition being pulled. All the way across, zero degrees being pulled out of cylinder one. Cylinder two, we're seeing a bit what is that? 2.6 degrees of timing at 4,300 RPM, but much, much better than we were seeing when he was just running straight 91 with no ethanol. What do we have here? Only 1.1 degree and 1.1 degree. Very, very minimal on number three. Number four, beauty. Zero degrees being pulled. Another perfect. And the final six cylinder of this Beauty V6, no timing being pulled. This worked out perfectly. Hey Adrian, you like that extra spicy sauce? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm really excited for Adrian. <laughs> I don't think he realizes what addiction I am getting him into. He ran a 13-1 last time out with that bull crap fuel that he was using with no ethanol. Now he's got 13% E, same fuel, everything the same, same road, same parts, you name it. Let's see how fast he can go now. <laughs> oh, it sounds good. Grin. 
half a second faster. Very nice, just from adding some E. How crazy is that? Well done, buddy. That's how it's done, guys. E85, the miracle drug. The speed that you get, the power you get from a little bit of mixing of E85 with your pump gas works wonders. We were seeing close to nine degrees of timing being pulled on some of his cylinders. Now, he's at a maximum of minus, I think it was minus four on only one cylinder. The other ones were either zero or minus one operating much, much better and getting more for what he paid for. He paid for a tune from in Integrated Engineering to go as fast as he could on stage one, 91 octane. Now he's getting it. To all of you Vancouverites, to everybody in the lower mainland, you spend all that money yet you're using our garbage, garbage, garbage fuel. Get over to Northside Petroleum and see my buddy Shane. Get over to co-op and pick up some of their flex fuel and it's only gonna make your car faster. You're not getting what you pay for with our terrible quality of fuel. Thank you all for watching. I hope this was a little bit more educational rather than seeing me ripping around in my RS3. Take care, guys. Until next time.